ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're going to take out some time on this Sunday morning to give you all an update as to what's been going on, the process, and how far we have been thus far. We feel it is necessary that we do let you all know the necessities of what's taken place. Over the past 10 days, we have processed a particular kind of lawsuit. And if you'll give me a moment, I'll show you exactly what we're talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a practice that is being done throughout the United States. And it is a practice that is being done usually by lawyers or agents representing the directors of certain boards, such as the National Labor Board. Now, this is the office of their so-called general counsel, the attorney representing them. This is what he filed in court. This is the case. And I said he. This is Ruth. Ladies and gentlemen, Ruth filed in the court this petition right here. Application for the enforcement of an order of the National Labor Relations Board. There is a process that you all, I would implore you to look up. It's called an application for the enforcement of an administrative order. Why is this so important? Well, we're going to cut to the chase and not beat around the bush. We're going to take you, this is the... Well, no, this is the New Deal. We need the actual new New Deal. This one right here. This is Presidential Proclamation 2039 declaring a banking holiday by President Roosevelt. We know that this act is still extant because even Donald Trump used this act when he spoke of, he declared a national emergency, that those are two very big words. Pay attention. As used in this order, this is an order. Now, what does this order require? Well, notice this. We're not looking for that. We're looking for, give me one second. It is this third paragraph right here that during such holiday, the Secretary of the Treasury, with the approval of the President, under such regulations as he may prescribe, is authorized and empowered to permit any and all such banking institutions to perform any and all of the usual banking functions. Ladies and gentlemen, one of those banking functions is that we want you all to pay attention, because this law has not changed. Be able to request for an advancement from the Federal Reserve of Federal Reserve notes, because we are any individual on our promissory notes. Now it says backed by or secured by direct obligations of the United States. Where's the security of the direct obligation of the United States? We have provided that any direct obligation of the United States or any notes Drafts, bills of exchange, bank acceptance acquired by any Federal Reserve Bank may be deposited with the United States Treasurer or with the local Federal Reserve agent. And upon these securities, those notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bank notes, Federal Reserve notes now may be issued. And in the case of deposits of government obligations, the issuance of Federal Reserve notes shall be for the entire amount. But if it's notes, drafts, bills of exchange, and bankers' acceptances, it shall be for 90% of the value of such securities. This is the government backing it, saying this is what we are doing. We are going to support that. This is a government order. Now, wait a minute. Y'all need to understand. They're going to say, well, that's just uh, Congress. Then That's not what they're doing. That's not the law. That's what they're suggesting. Section 403 of Section 13 of the Federal Reserve Act as amended, is amended by adding the following at the end of that paragraph, which says, subject to any limitations, restrictions, or regulations as the Federal Reserve Board may be prescribed, 
any Federal Reserve Bank may make advancements to any individual partnership or corporation on a promissory note of such individuals, partnerships, or corporations secured by direct obligations of the United States. Such advances shall be made for peers not exceeding nine years. That's what Federal Circular Number 10 purports to be. Back to the petitioning for the enforcement of an administrative order. Because the president issued an order regarding your right to access the banks, we are now going to the court to get them to enforce an administrative order. Notice what this attorney says. The National Labor Relations Board hereby applies to the court for enforcement of its order issued on blah, 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 blah. This is done all the time, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Let me show you how it's done all the time. We're going to keep going through this 1,000 some odd pages of applications to enforce an administrative order. And the administrative order that we are getting enforced is the one that's done by the President of the United States since he is the chief administrator. You've heard of the Clinton administration, the Biden administration, the Lincoln administration. Okay, every president is the chief administrator of the United States, of the United States, of the United States, of the United States. Petition for review. We're not asking for review. But that, oh, I'm sorry, I included it, uh, petitions for review, at least four of them. So, yeah, petitions for review is in here as well. Petitioner's corporate disclosure statement. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, what we are doing, we put together the petition and we're petitioning for a stay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the document. Give me one second. We couldn't tell you about this previously, but we're letting you know about this now. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six parties who are parties to this particular petition. However, every single person who has signed up for either a Merrill Legion or AMCF who have a mortgage, who have a car loan or a student loan, has been added to this suit. That's what the limited power of attorney was for. What will happen is that we will create a form for you to sign which will document the fact that you gave approval or would like to be a part of this suit. And that goes for everybody who's listening to this video. However, we call it a suit. It is not a suit. This is a petition to enforce an administrative order. The suit will come next. Why? Well, this is what this says here. This is application for enforcement of an order of the Commander-in-Chief Chief Administrator of the United States of America in conjunction with the Congressional Regulations and the Administrative Agency known as the Federal Reserve via their Operating Circular. If you did any research, you'll find out that the Federal Reserve is quote-unquote not an administrative agency. That is a lie. The Federal Reserve is an administrative agency. You remember, you're able to do a FOIA with the Federal Reserve. Well, FOIAs are under Title so-called 5 of the United States Code or the Administrative Procedures Act. Administrative Procedures Act applies to administrative agencies. And because the Federal Reserve says that they are required under that act to do this and do that, then there you go. The Trading with the Enemy Act, the authority by which the President of the United States presented Procl Proclamation 2039 on March 6, 1933, otherwise known as a banking holiday, as an order carrying with it criminal penalties for anyone who interferes with the or fails to carry out the dictates of the order. The Congressional Acknowledgement and Expansion of the Order as required by the Federal Reserve Act, specifically Sections 1, 2, 6, 10, 13, 16, Congressional Act and Record of March 9, 1933 and subsequent amendments, the Federal Reserve Operating Circular Error Number 10, Appendix Number 3, Presidential Proclamation 2039 specifically states that it is an order, and because the President of the United States of America is the Chief Administrator and the Federal Reserve, their agent, their membered banks, and so forth are bound by the APA. This is what they say on their website, and the petitioners 
have a right, uh, excuse me, have the secured right to petition the court under its judicial capacity for redress comes before this body in the interest of justice for the fair and judicious administration of justice as prescribed by the ordination, ordination. We ordain the ordained, the command in the Constitution for the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, electronic signature. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the petition. We're requesting for a stay, but we're also petitioning for a stay, petition for enforcement of an administrative order, petition for referral to the Attorney General's Office for criminal conduct and or war crimes. Remember, the Act of March 9, 1933 was an amendment to the Trading with the Enemies Act. The Presidential Proclamation 2039 was directly associated with the Trading with the Enemies Act. It made it unlawful for anybody. We'll show it to you because it is necessary that you see what we see. The president gave this prohibition in the act. And because the president controls all administrative agencies, sorry about this. It'll be one second to get to this paragraph. Whereas prescribed in Section 5 of the Act of October 6, 1917, the Trading with the Enemy Act, as amended, that the president may investigate, regulate, prohibit under such rules and or regulations as, regulations, regulations as he may prescribe by means of license or otherwise any transaction in foreign exchange or export, hoarding, melting, air marking of gold, silver coin, or bullion, or currency. And whereas it is provided in Section 16 of the Trading with the Enemies Act that whoever shall willfully violate any provision of this act, Trading with the Enemies Act, or of any license, rule, regulation issued thereunder, or whoever shall willfully violate, neglect, or refuse to comply with any order of the president issued in compliance with the provisions of this act shall upon conviction be fined not more than $10,000 and if a natural person in prison not more than 10 years or both. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the order we're going to get the court to enforce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know they're going to give us a hassle at the beginning because nobody has ever done this before. Go ahead and do your research. Nobody has ever brought before the court a petition to enforce this act, the presidential proclamation, or the congressional intent. Remember, Congress is the lawmakers. Regulations are not laws. Regulations apply to agencies and or corporations not to persons and because that is the case congress operates as an administrator of administrative agencies that's why it can regulate them so with that being said that is the premise for the petition we will place the petition online for those of you and i want you to understand you know what i just realized our page numbers are off because i I literally forgot to do the page numbers because there's been so much going on. And I don't think that's going to be too big of a hassle because this thing is 43 pages long or 46 pages long. So it's going to be the page numbers are going to be off just a little bit, but we do have everything in order. We do have everything under their particular segments. OK, we even have an addendum that explains what a promissory note is and what a negotiable instrument is. And we also have an addendum explaining who all the parties that are introduced into this matter are. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the way this is being brought before the court is I have to come in as a sole proprietor, and I am. The Eon Foundation is a sole proprietorship. It's also a corporation. It's also a nonprofit organization. You know, we have three different corporations known as the Eon Foundation. Then we have the AMCF Real Estate Private Foundational Trusts organization. This is a trust and all of the people who are associated with mortgages and this particular petition for an application for the enforcement of the administrative order, all of those individuals are introduced into this trust and are beneficiaries of the trust. And that's why each of you who come into this will become a beneficiary to trust and you will be able to sign into this particular suit. We are not, pay attention, filing a class action lawsuit. We're not filing a class action petition. To do that, we must ask leave of the court 
to convert it to a class action. We are not going that route. There is an end and around, and I will explain it to you because there is no reason for us to be coy here. What attorneys do when they want to do a class action and they don't want to ask leave of the court, what they simply do is they file the lawsuit and allow other people to join into the lawsuit being like situated, like minded, and like affected as in real parties of interest. So over the next week, we will produce that document for you all, those of you who would like to join in this. Now remember, this particular petition is asking for a stay. And because this particular petition is asking for a stay, that means that you will incorporate this into whatever suit you have. Oh, by the way, you see other real parties of interest? Or excuse me, in interest. That's where you all come in at. That's where you get to introduce the information you need to introduce. Now, we are not pulling punches here. I'm going to read this, just this section, AA, and we're going to stop here. Okay. Oh, the Frauded Homeowners of America, y'all better believe y'all here too. Just want to make sure that we're not, we didn't leave anything or anyone out. This took, started on this December 20th and didn't get finished with it until January 20th. Well, actually, it was processed and placed in the mail on the 26th, but it was finished on the 24th. And when I say nonstop, this is all I was working on. This took a lot of work. This statement is based on the principle of accord and satisfaction in criminal law and the law of contracts. The principles of accord and satisfaction apply when a debt or an obligation is disputed and, or excuse me, or in question, and the parties involved agree to a new or a different form of payment or settlement to discharge the original debt obligation. In this context, and in the context of 59 Stat 237, subsection 2, the tender of collateral security refers to when the borrower offered something of value, such as property or assets, as security for a debt or an obligation instead of paying the debt or obligation directly. The promissory note, which in no event shall be less than the amount the Federal Reserve notes applied for. When the collateral security is tendered, this is a court case, when the collateral security is tendered the, and accepted by the lender or creditor, the lender or creditor does not reject the collateral security within a reasonable time. It is considered as an accord, an agreement between the parties to discharge the original debt obligation. When the lender or creditor accepts the collateral security and does not reject it within a reasonable time, this is considered as a satisfaction. The discharge of the original debt or obligation under the law of contracts, the principle of accord and satisfaction is established. This principle states that the debtor tenders payment to the creditor for the full amount of the debt and the creditor accepts the tender without timely refusing it, the debt is considered satisfied. This is based on the idea that the acceptance of the tender and the release of the collateral security given as part of the tender is considered to be a substitute for payment. This principle is derived from common law and has been recognized by courts in the United States. It is important to note that in order for accord and satisfaction to occur, the debtor must tender payment of the full amount of the debt and the creditor must accept the tender without raising objections. Additionally, the collateral security offered must be legally valid and accepted as a substitute for payment. Again, this is not my words. These are the facts, ladies and gentlemen. Those of you who understand and want to do this on your own and think you can handle this on your own, by all means, you have my blessings. Go ahead and try it on your own. But I can guarantee and definitely guarantee that you will not be able to raise the points that are being raised by us. We don't list any codes. We only list statute at large, acts of Congress, and congressional record, as well as presidential proclamations and the Federal Reserve operating circular number 10. No codes. I think we may have listed about four different court cases, but that's it. 
No reason to list the codes because Congress didn't write the codes. As a matter of they approved it. There was no, no such thing in the legislative process of approving a law. There is a legislative process, and no part of that process means that somebody gets to approve something. So with that being said, wanted to take this time to let you guys know what we were doing, to let you know that we have not been dragging our feet. I do want to let you know about a situation. Someone acquired one of our packages, and they did so right about the 16th of January. We had forwarded the information, 16th of January, if you realize, right after a holiday. We had forwarded the information to one of our staff members. We have been having some issues with emails, and I will be getting that checked into. Of course, we're going to have issues with emails. Go back and listen to the videos over the last seven years, and you'll see that they're always messing with our emails, deleting files, deleting folders. It's just what they do. Well, we were able to send out a letter to the young lady, and a lady literally contacted her bank and told them that we were defrauding her. Really? We sent out a letter telling you we need this and we need that, and here is what you need to send to us? And she says, we're defrauding her. Ladies and gentlemen, at first I was about to rip her inside and out. But I realized, first, this is business. And we don't operate that way as an organization. We are going to provide the services we promise, and we're going to do the very best we can in doing so. I have a very good group of people working at AMCF, at SACOM, at SAA, and at AmeriLegion. And we have sent out, since the beginning of December, 1,500 communications. And over the coming weeks, there'll be another 1,000 being sent out to these different organizations. Plus, we'll also be sending out subpoenas to each one of these so-called creditors for anything associated with the operating circular number 10. Now, we're putting this on video, even though it hasn't, we haven't done it yet, but we're putting this on, on video because we are not afraid of our intentions. Yes, we know that the court is going to eventually rule against us. Why? Because they cannot afford to rule in our favor. Why is that? Because they are invested in mortgage-backed securities. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't shoot yourself in the foot. Look, I'm not doing this to pat myself on the back, but I don't know too many people like me. First, if a matter involved myself, and I was the last person to make a determination on the matter, then I look at it from the standpoint as it doesn't involve me. I have to look at it from the standpoint of two individuals that are not associated with me and make a determination based on the facts. And even if it goes against me, that would be the ruling. That's why we have just, pay attention, in the past, foregone putting my, myself in that situation and just given the person an upgrade in their packages. We had two young ladies... Uh, and they call all the time. We had two young ladies who ordered a sat pack, and things weren't done right. Not by us. They, they, their, the young lady, their son ordered it for them, and he has since passed. And they literally didn't have anybody to help them or anything. Nobody where they lived that could explain. And so we decided to just give them the Omega pack. Without any question, just bump them up to the Omega Pack, which meant that they received $10 million in tax credits, each of them. Without question, not because we knew them, not because we had a relationship with them, but because it was the right thing to do to adjust and compensate for not only, now there's no price for loss of life but for the son not being there to assist them because he helped start the process for them. Okay, remember, he passed away as a result of a car accident. So with that being the case, they needed some assistance. Now, we couldn't show them how to do anything or how to process anything, but we definitely could help them with the getting something to offset all of the misunderstandings. Then we have the notary. Ladies and gentlemen, our notary, one of our notaries, we have several notaries. One of our notaries is legally blind. Many of you have met her, and many of you have seen how 
the notary is conducted with seamlessness and no issues. Well, the issue was communication on my part. They have been interfering with my email address. Several people have been saying that they've been trying to email me, and I've been emailing them, and they've not been receiving it from me, and I'm not from them. So I'm now getting ready to call the company. Of course, they're going to interfere with my email. And so that delay has caused delays in people getting documentation. However, the documentation wasn't, um, what we say, essential, but they still are receiving the documentation. Um, addresses are being updated so that it goes to the right address so that there are no mistakes. The amount of money we're spending in mailings and the amount of money we're spending for staff time is, yes, depleting us. So what I definitely wanted to make sure we get across to you is that we are not sitting around here saying, oh, look at that. Somebody just paid us again. Okay, I can buy this car, and then I can go buy a house, and that's not going on here. Now, the reason why I'm going through this step of explaining all of this, as you saw when we initially told you about the application for the enforcement of an administrative order, that process can be used with any administrative agency you're dealing with. If there is a rule or a regulation that they must follow, they are bound to follow that rule or regulation. Go and take a look at what's known as the McDade Amendment. It was basically saying the Attorney General, if they have a set rule or policy in place, they must follow that rule and policy. So under the principles of the McDade Amendment, administrative agency must follow their own policies. Here's the other thing. Many of you are dealing with county and states, and many of you are dealing with administrative agencies. Filing of an application to enforce an administrative agency's order or an administrative order is only $49 in most places. You can file it on both state and federal levels, but you have to do it right, so do your research. What I would do for you guys is I'm going to put a link. This document, it's already been saved. I'm going to put a link. Oh, no. Yeah, this is the correct one. I have to change. Yeah, I'm going to have to change this one. This is the one for us. This is the one for the, the court. So this one is petition for the enforcement of an administrative order. Maybe. Okay, so we're going to put both the petition for the enforcement of administrative order. And give me one second. One second. One moment, please. Okay, we're going to have to. Because this is the official document. And what I'm going to have to do, because this document is being filed on the public, I am going to have to remove at least two pages of this document. Even though it's filed on the public, I'm going to have to remove two pages of the document because the individuals who are not involved in the law suit. Well, this is not a suit just yet. This will be converted to a suit. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me see if I can explain so that you guys get this. This is written in the format of a lawsuit. It is not a lawsuit, it's an application, but it's written in the format of a lawsuit. I hope you all understand what I'm saying. So either way, you cannot file a lawsuit, pay attention, you cannot file a lawsuit, pay attention, you cannot file a lawsuit and file a petition for the application for enforcement of an administrative order. You cannot file both at the same time. It is not permitted. If you file a lawsuit and you file an application for the enforcement of an administrative order, the application for the enforcement of an administrative order will automatically be dismissed. You need to understand that. Do your research on applications for the enforcement of administrative orders if you're going to try to do this on your own. Do your research. There's not a lot of research out there. That's why I'm going to send you copies of this stuff because these are all the filings by the attorney generals. Now, oh, sorry, this right here. What gives you the right to file one of these? Ladies and gentlemen, anyone can file this who are directly affected by the actions and or inactions of an administrative agency, an administrative agent, regarding the administrative order. Anyone. That includes you. All right. Thank you for letting me bring this information to your attention. We'll be giving you more updates as the coming days approach. Please be patient, all of you who have signed up for the mortgage program, because this was the idea to begin with. That's why you are already introduced into this. You'll be receiving documentation for you to sign so that we can forward to the court. Many of you, a court case number has not been assigned yet. 
we will keep you informed. Have a good day, everyone. 30 minutes or less.